Firstly, can I say thank you for your very kind invitation to join you today and uh, for this, the 25th of the CEMEX conferences. Uh, it, it's extremely generous of you. Um, you're probably aware I'm not a dairy farmer. Um, I did grow up very much uh, in a dairy orientated farm. Um, that was a long time ago. And if you think things have changed quite a lot in the 25 years since this conference started, it's changed a lot more since the days I was a regular visitor to the Jersey herd and the Ayrshire's uh, at Windsor. But interesting, some things don't change very much. Good husbandry, good observation, good balance in terms of nutrition. But my goodness, the ways that you get there and the amount of knowledge that's available to help you in a completely different ballpark, as they say. So those 25 years of this conference uh, is quite a thought uh, about how quickly things have evolved, even in that period of time. And I think uh, a big thanks is owed to CEMEX for their continued support of this event, but also to those who come to it. Uh, that would seem to indicate that there's a lot of useful information here and a very good opportunity to get a really good feel for, for what is going on. And my background in terms of farming is slightly different, but I see quite a lot. So I've had uh, uh, a very interesting period in RABDF, and at the moment, uh, with the Royal Society of, uh, Societies of the Commonwealth, which have biannual conferences, which reflect a rather even wider interest in dairy and its importance uh, across the Commonwealth. But in terms of dairying here, the, this year has really started with perhaps rather more concern and uncertainty than even is usual in the dairying industry. And I was struck by the fact that even on, on the way up here, a, a national newspaper who doesn't normally uh, show a huge amount of interest in the um, dairying sector did have quite a big article on what was happening uh, to dairy farming uh, and how difficult it is for dairy farmers to make any money at all and to get paid a, a real uh, value amount for what they're producing. And that difficulty of, of understanding how it fits uh, within the global markets. And I think that is a debate that I'm sure you have here. Uh, the links with the uh, various markets around the world that have a real impact uh, on what is going on in the industry. Uh, it seems that China has an impact on all sectors. Uh, it doesn't matter, seem to matter what they are, um, but dairying as well. Uh, the impact of Russian sanctions uh, have had on exports, and again, probably not many people would realize that they were indeed a, a big export uh, for us in terms of uh, uh, the sector. And it just also shows, sadly, that along with the inconveniences of the, um, the weather that we have, uh, and that things change very quickly, you, and the ability to plan for them is extremely difficult. So all the downturns are having a, a very dramatic impact on the sector, and there will be many dairy farmers leaving the sector unless something changes very quickly indeed. But your presence here and your desire to, to come together and discuss the industry also shows that it has a, a real future. You can discuss in a way that your predecessors wouldn't have done, and I'm sure this is one of the changes that you realize is happening, is the ability to discuss global markets in a way that farmers probably wouldn't have been much interested in before. And the, the difference that little movements in terms of amounts will make to you. And it's impossible to make a real assessment of, of the degree to which the low supermarket prices directly affects the dairy farmer, but it is demoralizing for farmers to see their product devalued to such an extent. They will say, of course, that the whole countryside rises or falls on the prosperity of the dairy industry. And I have heard that said quite often and from other sectors, perhaps not in entire agreement, but from 
most farming perspectives outside the sector, there was always a feeling that everybody else struggled, but the dairies, they were okay, because they had a 365-day uh, business and they got regular checks. I think people, other farming uh, sectors will understand that that's, they're in the same boat. Nothing is uh, given anymore in, in terms of income. It is, and you've had highlighted the, the variations, the, the differences, and I hope you found that important to come to here. All the impacts uh, that have an effect on your ability uh, to have a successful business. And we've heard some of that this morning. Your speakers have maybe focused on one or two issues that are perhaps not very high on the list of agendas. Jones disease, particularly. Responsible use of medication, particularly. Uh, the impact of TB, which I would feel as well. I don't have a dairy, but in, in terms of trying to produce beef livestock. The controls, how you do it, what medication you use. This is a very, very live debate. And getting the best possible information and accurate information on those subjects, sometimes quite hard to come by. And guidance is important. Reliable guidance is even more important, knowing where to find that reliable guidance. And maybe this sort of event helps you to do that. Then that's a real bonus from your perspective. How, how you explain the sector, and I, perhaps this is an issue which I think I find uh, very much uh, an issue that I've come across, is that educational role. How do you educate the consumer better to understand what it means to get milk to, a, to the consumer? What has been involved in delivering that product to the consumer? That's quite an, a, a challenge, just in terms of the raw material, never mind everything that goes on in the background and the science and technology that is required, and the, the debate that is, is raised along the way. Your speaker today, uh, Liz Phillips, from, uh, has highlighted one of the issues that colleges can provide in terms of education for those who want to be involved in the sector. And I hope you would agree with me that that was a, a, a real message of an investment in your industry, uh, not just from the college, but from those young people stepping up who want to go to the college. That's really important. But the mixture of what they provide at the college is equally important. The balance of how you promote your wares and your production and how you sell it. Is it through ever increasing size of herds and businesses? Is it through controlling some of your output through farm shops and farmers markets? Does the consumer worry fundamentally about the price that they pay? Or in those conditions, do they're not so worried about the price, just the quality and the fact that they have the product there at all? Is there a major debate? between medication, their responsible use, and the organic lobby, and how and that rests with the ability to provide medication when it's needed, particularly in pain control. Is indoor and outdoor, is it one or the other? Is it an intelligent mix of the two, and how you balance that, and where the mix comes in? That's a complicated debate to try and get over to the consumer. But education, and particularly the education through the colleges and the visits that many farmers are prepared to do to educate the consumer, must be the first step in trying to get the message across that this is a sector which is A, not disappearing, B, is fundamental to your health, and C, really does have a future. And if I can say this right at, um, at the end, because you, your, you, your speakers have been considerably more um, suited to their tasks than I am in this environment. But can I just, one thing I'd like to underline is that I think an awful lot of people regard jobs in this sector as unskilled. There is no such thing as an unskilled job, and certainly not in this sector. It's all about science and technology and the appropriate use of that technology, and people who can manage it and make it work for them and the animals in their care. 
So it is also for us to get that message across through education that this is a skilled job. The production of milk is not an unskilled occupation. It is highly skilled and it has a benefit not just to the individual but to the environment and the animals that they use. That's quite a challenge for all of us but I, I believe that conferences like this make it much more likely that we will get the correct information out to those who really need it. Those who are within the sector as producers and buyers, but also to your consumers, who fundamentally are the people that you really need to educate. So with a big thank you to the speakers who've made it possible to learn so much more, and I've learned a lot today. Thank you very much indeed. With a big thank you to Semex for supporting bringing this network together through these conferences for the last 25 years and seen such a growth in interest. But a particular thank you to those who've invested in the sector, in their own time, in their own interests, in their own enthusiasm, to maintain it, to improve its level of production, and all the benefits that come with having a seriously well-performing uh, dairy sector. Uh, I. I'm one of those people who regards that um, long life and happiness starts with drinking unpasteurized milk, but you probably don't need to know that. But <laughs> I started on it, and I'm planning to finish off.